All right, here we go. Let's start the meeting. Here we go. Um, what Rodney didn't come. Larry has COVID and needs sicker and a dog home. And Rodney spent most of the day Friday or something with Larry, so he was afraid oh. he might get it. And his niece there, somebody came in and gave him a big hug, and I guess she's got it. And, uh, so, anyways, he he was trying to be nice to us. That's good. And not show up. Um, I guess Jim slid his truck into the ditch um, Saturday. Um, but um, he thought it might have been uh, Tyrod, but that was all. What truck for one time? Or... Yeah, went in kind of on the side, I guess. Yeah. Um the and that so, was flowering one day, I think. Four yes. Days. Um yeah, Sunday because Thomas had the greater and Jim Jim had Larry's truck, Larry was home. Um and he said they had quite a time with tire chain Saturday, but that's because it's the end of the season I guess. Trying to get all the goodness out of them, huh. but um, <clears throat> outside of that, um, everything went pretty good. I guess everybody got stuck somewhere. That's what Tom was saying. Like, oh, really, in the storm? Yeah. Well, Rodney said he got stuck. You know, well, the strapper then where you turn around, he backed in, and it was just mud. Really. And. Uh, so that's it. He said you have some quotes on material. I have some quotes on material. Oh, you know, we'll yeah, the yeah, secondary. Yeah. And he said to make sure that we understood that they're going by the ton, not a yard. Yeah. And it takes a ton and a half to make a yard. Oh. So he said you look at the figures and you go, wow. <laughs> that's a deal. And then when you figure it up, yeah, it's not a deal. <clears throat> or not as much of a deal. It's up to you. Um, those are my kids' Easter candy, and I bought it once. I opened up the bag that's in my car and gave you guys some Easter candy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kids, a little bit, but that's okay. Kids, but... kids won't get any. Are <laughs> they watching? Or not, no. <laughs> It's probably better because then they'll be up all night and I'll just end up eating it all. So I don't know. There's enough sugar. Yeah. 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 That's be, be in the pantry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> While Devin's <laughs> out stoking the furnace, <laughs> eating the little rabbits. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. 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 What's the material for? Uh, the we just, I told him, yeah. I asked him. Mm -hmm. To get a price on stone, you know, and and West Lab or mm -hmm. Barry or somewhere, just because it's supposed to be better. Um, but um, yeah, see, ten fifty five a uh, unit, which is a ton, which is a ton. And if you if you go half again, then you're up sixteen seventeen, which everybody else is. And that's probably not the call of the No, no, I suspect that's right there. Yeah. Oh, 935 a ton in addition for hauling. Oh, so yeah, basically 10 dollars to me, even. Yeah. I mean, you should figure it real quick. So it's going to be 25. Bowls a little place for each item, 1990 a ton. Oh, delivery. So that's 30 bucks right. a yard. Sure, what I figured. <clears throat> well, they spread it on the road. Is this right? Is this yeah. hard pack or is it all stone? Um, three quarter crush and one and a half inch crush. But they're both the same price. Is there any equivalent we get of this from either McCullough's or Tucker's? Or is this? Well, supposedly this is better stone, harder stone, state, state inspected. But the, the half inch would be like they're planting it in the colors in there. 
Yeah. So, it, it, uh, fines. Some, a lot of fines. <clears throat> anyway, something to think yeah, about. Something to ponder. We yeah. definitely don't want to put it somewhere where it's going to disappear down into the mud. And never yeah. Come back, <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, I don't know what you got for a quote, but we did a road in Brookfield once, and the boys got everything set up, and then fight come in. And they tailgated it, mm -hmm. and Arnold knocked it over enough so he could get through. And then when they stopped home, then he went back yeah. and graded everything. And we also ran a roller on that food and roller. So that's and what it turned out to be good. I think it'd be neat if whoever hauls from wherever that they actually put it on the road instead of bringing it down here and dumping it right. and reload right. it. Right. Right. That. I mean, but you got to be all set up for yeah. it. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> the ditches all done. Like the way I get firewood. Yeah, you push it away. <laughs> no, the opposite, right? You <laughs> lock it up, then you bring it, stack it back, and yeah. stack it again. Yeah. Yeah. The way I have to throw it in, stack it again. Yeah. Just keep you on yeah. twice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, I'm done. No more good mate. Hmm. Yeah, it's time to say. Oh, we got a copy of my list. Close that. Was that? Yeah, I voted that. Did you still plan to be here at 620? I think so, but I didn't, he didn't say anything today, so maybe he forgot. Are all the trucks fixed again? Yeah, everything's. Well, with the exception of the fun truck, it didn't say that fire off. But everything else he said was going on. Right? I noticed when Thomas used the radar to what Spring Road and up around Monarch and stuff, because obviously he didn't have chains on, but he didn't seem to have any trouble. But it was nice snow to plow through. Yeah. As far as he plowed it right down to the Gravels, right? So, it's real life. Yeah. <clears throat> well, there's not really much frost in the road, but it was. Right. Um, I know so I had found that if you ran over it a couple times, then it was slippery, yeah. You know, it's too because I showed I threw my chains on because I was doing quite a lot of spinning, yeah. And I didn't think Doug would come on and pull me out, so. <laughs> I told so Melanie out on Kelsey Mountain Road one night. She had the mattress mail truck, mail rig, and didn't quite get back out into the road. That wasn't there in this story. It was the last one. Yeah. She said, are you ready for bed yet? I said, no. Well, don't pull me out. <laughs> you ready for bed? that question. <laughs> <laughs> But the real slippery snow was that White House two days before. Yeah. Yeah. That's the worst fact. I didn't. Yeah. yeah. From up there and back. Yeah. So yeah. They had to plow the roads. It was like three inches of that super banana field. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Awful. You can see the road. It was yeah. just so That's cool. a worst fact. I come back from, uh, I went down to shop more Saturday morning. And when I came back, I went down South Randolph Road, and you couldn't see nothing. I mean, it just I had it just right, and it was coming down. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they hadn't plowed for a while. Right. So yeah. snow was fairly deep. Yeah, it was awful. Well, I don't know. Well, since we're going to get here, you're all down with a road report. Yeah. We could summon Baxter to screw all around here. Summon him. Really? You want to roll her up here so you can be seen? No. <laughs> gonna roll here anyway. Yeah. Okay. Can you dress for her? Yeah. Hey. You're on. I'm on. Yep. Okay. Uh it's to do with the cemetery fence. Um which one backs right here? Right over here, yeah. You know. The old iron fence there that we kind of thought that one way or another if we could get get something, but uh, 
as I understand it, this part here is really not the cemetery commissioner's deal. It's a Hoyt, what they call that Hoyt. Memorial Park, isn't it? Think. Memorial Park. I think that's what it's it really. You know, so, yeah. I don't know how that come about. <laughs> never, I never heard yeah. of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, I got two two quotes, but it's only from the Springfield Fence Company in Springfield. Uh, we, I guess it'd be mostly up to you guys. Um, when you go up Potash, you go to the second one. That's different fence from there to the top. So I got a, a quote on that, and then I've got a quote on this fence that's there now. Hopefully it could be the same same thing. So um, if you want to look at it, then you have pictures in there. You have pictures in there. What's there now? So, is it an old wrought iron that's just rotting? Yeah, it's right here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah here's a, another one. So, so you want to put the same kind of fence all the way up through? I don't know how how we do want to do it. Uh, there is quite a little difference in price between that iron and that. I don't know what you call that fence up above that chain, 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 chain link. Chain link. Chain link. Yeah. yeah. They call it steel fence, I guess. Well, that's a steel is it, is it on woven, the old. Is it woven? They two different. There's two uh, different machinery. Yeah. 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 But the thing is, this price. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what's up to time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Literally. Mm. Yeah. This is sophisticated. <laughs> Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I frequent the village cemetery, so it's a good looking idea. Great, great park. Yeah. But there is a difference in price. Yeah, this is 8,600. Here's for 242 feet. Right. This but that. 16 by the for the same. $16 for the iron. For the iron. That is not the right footage. Because when I measured it, and you go up the hill here, you go up and then it's flat. I measured from there down to here, from here down to that first pole, uh, telephone pole. Yeah. But the thing is, um, that's really not the right place because we don't know how far you want to go up. Into the cemetery up further because that fence now goes up just to make that corner, it goes there, but it's down over the bank. Oh, it's a good, good fence, it's never been yeah. bothered with or, or anything, you know. So, uh, they have got to come if we decide no matter which type of fence we do because if they go. With this fence, then you've got to go to the gate. You've got to go to that that gate up the hill, for which I did not measure that. Mm -hmm. So, but as they say, they got to come and look at it. Yeah. Now that price that they give us is dumb. Mm -hmm. That's the way they the yes. lady told me. Mm -hmm. When I give you a price, it's done. It's not salary or yeah, okay. You know, that, that's when it's all done. The deal. So that will be more. Either one of them will be more. Because you need to add on the footage that we have. Right. right. It, will be, it will be more than that. Um, they want to know if we need a gate. We don't because the gate trail is there. And they put this 
they must have put this gate in when they've done that further up, because that's the same type of material, you know. I mean anyway. No, no, it's just a it's just a gate. It ain't very high. It's kind of an iron <coughs> iron, but it's you know, it's that's a two yeah. two piece gate. Can you widen this gate? Uh I don't know. It, it don't need to be. <laughs> Yeah, you you drive through there the <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I can do it. Good thing not the engine. So, so um, how how high do you want it to? This one right here, I want it. It's uh, I think it's three feet. I want it to. Well, I don't know why I'm saying I want it, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I want the same length, same height, as this one. Yeah. And if we go with the other, I want the same length, uh, same height as that. So that's that's higher. That's quite a lot. Yeah. Quite a lot higher. But wouldn't it look better with the iron fence down below here? It's it's whatever we can get together and what you want. Even though you even though you know it's quite a lot higher. Mm -hmm. As you already got the fence, the length fence up there. Well, Although I didn't know you could. What's way up there? You can't see it from the road. No. Uh, no. Are you going to contact any other places? I sure. should. Yes, uh, I should. I should. Uh, we had a meeting down to the house here three, four weeks ago. Ben Tucker got, got on the phone and, and gave me some names of some. Pets companies. I have not uh, got a hold of anybody yet. Yeah. yeah. So, um, does the whole thing need replacing? No. Uh, when you come to the top of the hill up here, when you go back to that gate, that's not bad at all. <clears throat> and this out here, as you start you go and then you start up, that, that fence isn't bad, but it's down over the hill. Which could probably be, you know, brought back up. That's all gonna be cut out of it. The bushes and, and all that stuff could be cut out of it. It's right on that side hill, but when can you cut it down? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Now, as Dennis and I was talking about it, um, he got that money from Annie Labor, and that's only for that cemetery. Just that. Just only. That. Only. She hasn't read in her will, but and I've got a copy of it down, down to the house. They put that care for only the village cemetery. Is she buried there? Yes. Yeah, so um, I thought we could use the money, but Dennis says all we can use is the interest. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? That's what it's at. It's in the hands of the trustees of public funds, so what is it we can use? 5% or whatever it is? That's their rule. I yeah, it's, uh, it's 117,000 she gave it. Then. Have to wait a hundred, yeah, <laughs> 117 and 118. Because when they get it all figured up, there was another thousand that they figured out. So we got that, we got just that. for that cemetery. Yep, just for that cemetery. Church got the bomb, <clears throat> got a lump. Mm -hmm. Rotten School got a lump. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I don't know. I when I when I first thought about it, I thought, well, we got the money, but if we can't only use the interest, right. we're not gonna right. have the money. Maybe right. the town would have to help us. And do you have a plan to replace it this year? Um, uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of up to you guys and us. But uh, when you want it done, um. Uh, 
they, I don't know how busy they are. I've been after them for well over a year. These people? Yeah, mm -hmm. these these people about it. And they keep saying, well, you know, we're so busy. <laughs> Last year, we didn't have anybody come on. Hmm. And uh, when I, I talked to her twice, and she said, you know, she wrote on there that, you know, they'd have to come up and cipher everything out before they can, that would be, they can do it. That's five percent. Six thousand dollars. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think we should be watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See what you guys think. Yeah. See what you guys guys think of it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you <laughs> when you go up here, look down over the bank. You can't see it. Yeah. You can't see it. Can I I, yeah, I'll Sunday this will you too. They'll show you. They'll be like, it's bad here. <laughs> the thing is, I wonder if I can't take that fence there. Right. Bring well, it up, that. but there's a little bit of a uh, place to put it, you know, when you get up there, it's pretty near the black top of yeah. down on the bank, you know, it's not much of a shoulder there, but you know, man, right up to that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is the whole cemetery fence? Yeah. Or on the uh, upper yeah. side? On, it's on, on the Texas yeah. side. On the Texas side, it's fine fence, fence. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes, it goes up and then it cuts down up to the top. It cuts down to this kind of fence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I thought this fence here went over to the corner. I call it the new part. Yeah. That was that, but it don't. And Dennis wondered if at, at some time that's uh, the end of the fence was what the cemetery owned at one time. Because they stopped right there and still. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. that was added on, yeah. you know, afterwards. So that fence didn't go all the way up through there. Yeah, so. But it's not all Waite Memorial Park. Some of it's what, the town cemetery or? Court. Court. Yeah. yeah. That's what they said. Because cause you guys are getting a real deal. We pay them for all that being mold. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't pay for it anyway. Yeah, I'm right. So it's all from the same body of what the hell you do. You like to do I would like to do unless you want to you want to make a copy of it. Okay, you got two lines. You want the next one? Yeah. Okay. You might not like this one. Yeah. <laughs> the town drive. Yeah, it's a dirty <laughs> move. I went over this morning to Virtue and I, you know, heard say that they were building a new one. They're not. They already built it. Right. Oh, so you didn't know that. I think it's a paper. Oh, you? Yeah. Oh, the one in picture, you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a good talk with the guy at the camera lodge, as I'm always named it. And um, they, they built it last year, and they were in it. Uh, it's a four-bay garage. Uh, and he said it was stick built. But I went and looked at it. I couldn't get in it because it was all the value was on. Uh, but there is metal on the outside. And uh, it, the guy said it does have a ceiling in it. They figured that they should Put a seal in it still sure. had that all over for the heat. Yep. Heat and maybe the moisture if it was open. Um and one thing else, it's a heated slab. The whole thing is the bottom of the truck. Oh, what's the dimensions? I don't the know. Four bays. Huh? Four bays. Four bays. Four bays. Four bays. Be like yeah. 50, 60 feet wide. What's right up in this? Four or five. 
But they must be yeah. office space or something. Too. And uh, they just got thrown enough for a truck or so you, uh or they can they go two trucks in for end or no it just just like well you it's all on the front you drive right in each yeah. each bay. On one end, as you say, is the office, mm -hmm. probably bathrooms or whatever else else in there. And uh, um, he said it was really insulated. And when they done it, they really insulated it really, really good. Um, it was, he didn't, he, yeah, he told me who built it, but it's somebody out of bed that built that. And, uh, he said they did ask Morton Builders, you know, the Bill Builders. They wouldn't come look at it because they were so busy that they knew they couldn't do it. And so they went and got got somebody else to do it. Um, so, you want to know the price? No. Okay. <laughs> I'll send you a letter. <laughs> No, no, no. I tell you, you can have a cemetery fence or a tiger yeah. on. <laughs> Pick one. Yeah. One million oh. five hundred and twenty-five thousand. Ooh, they didn't have. Well, Chelsea's up just over a million. I think so. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't. I don't like Chelsea. I go to last year's meeting. Now, what's Chelsea? I've never been in that. I didn't either. Oh. I've been telling that they go right through it. They go on each other. Did it go right through it? I don't know, it could be. That's what I've heard. So I don't know how they packed the trucks in there. Yeah. yeah. Have to look at it someday. Yeah. Yeah. He <clears throat> said he said they went around quite a few drivers and looked at them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So but this was last year. So another a million eight. Uh, wow. I wonder. What it cost to heat it? Well, he says they're hoping before they get through with it in time, they're going to put solars, solars on it, and they're going to put them heat pumps into it. And he thinks that's going to make quite a difference. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be some nice having that heated slide. Yeah. With yeah, you're right. Yeah. I asked him, I said, don't that take an awful lot and keep, keep that heated when the truck goes in all snow and everything? And he says, as long as it's heated. Right. It's always heated. It's because always definitely It takes so long for it to cool off because the heat concrete's warm. Yeah. So yeah. if you open the door up, you know, you can leave it off half a day. Yeah. Um, the concrete would mean hardly get cool. Right, that's what, that's what he was saying. He was a very nice guy. What's that thing down there? But the roof is not a flat roof. It goes up like this, and then the other goes down like this. It's not oh, like this, and it's oh, not. Yeah. Is that what they call them? Yeah. Longer on one side than the other. Yeah. Huh? It's longer on one side than the other. Right, on the back. Yeah. The back side gets quite a lot longer. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it is a nice looking building, but you know, he said that they're hoping in time to uh, do this other sores and stuff. But the sores, well, yeah, they can put down a front of the barn out of the shed. I mean, because right. you got that little yeah. bit and you got that long. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to Yeah. Maybe that's why they built it that way. Right. Yeah, good grade. Yeah. You want the explosives? Yeah. Yeah. And they were making see that for road foreman, so you could apply for that. Yeah, yeah. Al just um yeah. just got through there. He said he did. I said, You found anybody? And he said, No, because they haven't had a town meeting yet. They're going to have it <laughs> yeah. next Tuesday, I think he said. Oh, really? Yeah, he said they haven't, haven't had it yet. Huh. And I said, You got anybody? And he said, Well, you know, they're kind of hoping that one of the guys. We'll take it that's been there that knows what's going on, but he says we, we had no idea yet what is, what is going on. So, you know, like I said, Alan's Al been there 15 years. Yeah. That's what it said in the paper. Yeah. Oh, but they want to take no picture. <laughs> 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 it didn't say 15 years. 
No, don't go in. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right, Lenny. Is it a good question? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> I don't think anything. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Natural flavor. Okay, we only know what that means, you know. Right, right. <laughs> I, I saw the game of legend. <laughs> the parts of the packaging. <laughs> She's got a cricket. Yeah. All right, Rudy, what do you have for us? Uh, I was here to talk about the reappraisal. Um, so I chatted with our district advisor, who is now back around. Um, Basically, this next step is probably going to be putting together an RFP to start to, we likely will see the notice that uh, our order to reappraise um, in June or July. We have passed the threshold, and so we know it's coming, but they probably won't issue the formal notice until June or July. We probably can expect to see that. Um, Who's that district person? Like, where is that? That's not the district advisor. Yeah, is that for Listers? Is that it, two it rivers? Is, yeah, it, it is for uh, support of uh, Listers. And yeah, so they break it down regionally. Yeah. And we just got a new one uh, last year. So she was fairly new. And then I didn't hear anything. And then came to find out that she was on maternity leave. <laughs> so she had just uh, come back recently and, and um, it was helpful to talk to her. So Phyllis Hayward from Chelsea had reached out about possibly trying to coordinate with them. Um, the basic gist at this point is that there's just not sufficient capacity to conduct a number of reappraisals that are mandated by statute at this point. So they have recommended, you know, trying to pool with other towns to get some sort of volume because outside appraisal firms typically like to deal with 5,000 parcels and up. And we are, we have less than a thousand. Um, so the recommendation was to try to pool with other towns. So Phyllis had reached out about that to us and Wes Fairley and Corinth has, it was already in the process. She reached out to Versher as well. And since then, Wes Fairley has contracted with somebody and Versher's already started the process. So Chelsea is the likely candidate in this area that would be similar to us. Many parcels do they have? And they have similar to us. Yeah. But that's still way less than what they really yeah. like, right? Yeah. So uh, the, the next logical step is probably going to be putting together an RFP um, because in order to even have a conversation, with firms, um, they're going to want to see certain things that are detailed in the RFP. So um, I'm starting to work on putting putting that together. Um, it shouldn't be too extensive a process, but Becky called up the latest updates on the reappraisal fund that we have, which is currently one forty nine five hundred. Um, when I talked to Jen Myers. Nemric, who provides a lot of our uh, computer software and have for years, does reappraisals. Um, so they are one of the contractors in the mix. Uh, she thought they were typically somewhere around 130 bucks a parcel. So that would put us at 130,000 just for the outside contractor. Um, anything Above that, that we have can technically be applied uh, to additional lister hours or other subcontractors if we want to uh, hire more help to, to conduct any of the pieces that we can do in house. We, uh, you know, lost Helen last year, so that was a significant amount of experience. Um, so, Deb and Darlene are still pretty new um, in, Deb in her first year and Darlene in her second. It honestly took me three years 
to even feel like I had the sense of the annual cycle because you're only doing stuff once a year. Um, so we don't have a lot of experience on, on board um, in terms of conducting impounds work. Uh, is that the sort of thing, if there was extra money now, it would come back as a contract worker? I could float that to her. Um, that could be um, apparently applied, used in that way. Right. Yeah. Um, well, um, don't have to be contiguous, do they? Like, I mean, how far away could we? They don't. You technically could. Um, you know, there's nothing, nothing that states. So the report to the legislature on the legislative changes that mandated the new threshold and kind of the starting to map out the process going forward. Uh, broke the state into geographical assessment areas. Um, and they tried to loosely group similar towns, but they also tried to disperse that somewhat geographically because if you're seeking out the same contractors, um, you're not going to want the southeast corner of the state all to be in the mix for the same year, in theory. Um, the reality is what I'm seeing is, you know, that people are contracting with out-of-state contractors, national firms. Um, and you know. Randolph had a place, um, it was like Nemec, but one letter was different. Right. Um, Nemec. Yes. New England Municipal Center, I think it. They do. Right. They do, yeah. I don't and know I think they, they were up in the kingdom someplace or somewhere up that way. The kid that come to my shop, he was like from Missouri or somewhere working for him. <laughs> Hired him on to the Boulder Hill appraisal. So there, there's and uh, partly, you know, we use the camera or the Microsol CAMA system. CAMA is Computer Assisted Mass Appraisal System. So it's basically what towns use to um, try to equitably assess everybody is plug the numbers into a computer assisted program that uses cost tables to cost things out, you know, based on the input that you give it. Um, we have used what NEMRIC has supported all these years, which is the Microsoft system. They suggest if we were going to try to contract with other contractors, think about being flexible with um, using other CAMA systems. That sounds good on the face of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the reality is then that is going to want us additional costs and um, training to get up to speed with with a new camera system so it would bring in a whole different set of costs that are that personally i feel like are going to be you know another issue to, to get a handle on network currently appears to be looking out to 2020 so that is um, I'm happy to not just be rephrased. Overhead. So last year before this, the statute changed, it was CLA or COD could be a trigger, and 65% of the towns were mandated. So they got rid of the CLA, and 62% of the towns were mandated by just the COD. The, the market's been crazy the last few years. Personally, I, I think that will level out again, but I, I don't know. And um, my wife's really slow right now. There's nothing to sell. As customers, so, um, and I, I personally think that once the snow's gone, that'll change really fast. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> um, it, I've heard that from some other folks too, and that surprise me in many respects. 
Um, and, and to me, that's basically an, an indicator of the, the instability of the market in yeah. the last few years. Yeah. It's just been all over the map. Yeah. Um, you know, the sales that we saw certain <coughs> segments of the market were going really high. Um, basic small houses on a small lot were not all that different from what we've seen in the past. Um, it, it's just been all over the map. When was that last rate appraisal? 2010. Okay. So, do anything, right? Yes and no. Um, <laughs> it, it seems like probably, you know, the COD to me is, has it always been kind of a more important one in my mind. That That's equity within the town. Um, and we haven't been that bad on that over the years. And honestly, our our CLA ran a, ran a bell curve after the last time it was done. It, went, it peaked out probably five years ago and then came back down on the other side until the last couple of years when it just you know, went crazy. Uh, so I think that the, the theory is that the farther you get out, the more well, unequitable it's going to be. The reality on our statistics haven't backed that strongly. Um, and, and I think that's part of the nature of the type of area that we live in. Um, I think we're not as, in as volatile a real estate market is all parts of the state. But it might be about 20 years if we sign up today. <laughs> exactly. So that is a long time. The, the discussion in the legislative uh, discussions was looking at a mandated six-year cycle going forward. Whether There's been a lot of proposals that have been tossed out, and uh, there's been a lot of pushback against some of the proposals. Some of it was looking at a, a state run uh, system so that we actually wouldn't have listers going forward. Um, and that has been some pretty significant resistance pretty quickly. So, honestly, I, I think you know the next step will be putting together an RFP and starting to approach other firms, get some idea what the window looks like. I will try to come back to you all with more of a um, idea of what I see unfolding, but I want it to be on your radar that NEMRIC currently is, you know, 2029. I personally lean towards working with them so that we don't have to use another canvas system. Um, the district advisor said, you know, if we're looking at coordinating with Chelsea, or other towns, we should talk to Nemric or whatever contractor and make sure that they're that, that gets us some sort of discounts because she said if not, right, it's not worth your while because it will complicate things. Um, just the nature of um, different towns do things different ways and it will have issues that come with it. What's your contractually? signed up with a reappraisal firm that does the state give you as long as it takes them? There's no uh, spoken policy on that right now. <laughs> I I think we're, honestly, I think a lot's happening as we go right now. Um, I, I think it's, it's a matter of, the reality is this is where we're at. Nobody, anticipated that we'd be looking at 2029. Right. Yeah. So how how do they mandate towns? Right. I don't that discussion has not been out loud that I've heard. Yeah. And we have to budget for it anyway. So, right. so the, the good news was that the reappraisal fund seems to be in reasonable shape. Um you know, I, I don't know about the reality of how much we ha have the capacity to do in-house. Um, so, you know, the more we need to contract out is going to be at, at higher fees. And so that budget could get 
too quickly, but uh, as it looks right now, it appears that the the funding that we have put away for this looks pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, what do we put away? If we have to wait another five years, we'll have all kinds of money. <laughs> and it might cost all kinds of money. <laughs> I think you guys are just having that discussion about yeah. something else, right? <laughs> we're up, we're to go up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, the suggested processes were to have the discussion with the select board early in the process. So I wanted you to be yep. aware of what was going on and that we will likely see this mandated order come in June or July. And uh, I will be working on putting an RFP together in the meantime. And when you have that done, I have um, an account for the Vermont bid registry system. So if you want to send it to me, I think it's okay. Perfect. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Will the regional district person help us potentially find other towns that might want to join forces? Um, she she could. Um, she was the one. She had been talking with Phyllis Hayward, and um, that was part of what prompted Phyllis to talk to her. So yeah. I think that was the town that was in the mix originally. It was probably the ones that she had suggested. Um, well, there are AAI. Hold on. We find four other towns just like hundreds going through this. Okay. <laughs> Anything I can answer or? You mentioned <clears throat> doing some, some of it in house. I mean, what, what, what part of it can you do in house? Um, basic data collection. Um, so, you know, the, the processes that they're going to use will be similar to what we do on our quarterly rotations. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we can, we can help with some of the basic data collection. But if you could get someone like Helen, that would really help, I yeah. guess. Thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I have no idea if Judy Lewis would consider something like that again, but she's yeah. still in town as well, as well. She actually kind of oversaw the last time that we did a, a full town life. Yeah. Sounds like a movie, we'll get all that. <laughs> yeah, all the more professionals. <laughs> yeah. 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 One more time. <laughs> Pull them out. Yeah. All right. This is going to be the fourth in the trilogy. That's right. <laughs> Reappraisal. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. How much do we put away a year for the reappraisal fund? It's a uh, per parcel payment oh. um, from the state that gets sent to us yeah. and then gets put into this fund. So um, that's supposed to cover it, or is it it's just that helps, helps. helps subsidize? It's supposed to help, yeah. Basically, um, and it looks like it was ninety six hundred dollars this year, ninety six fifty in that range. During a reappraisal, every property is visited and put through a metric algorithm for whatever standard they're using. Yeah, and then matched up against what the listers have done here. Uh. Yeah, there'll be various statistical analyses. There's what they call three prong tests that they'll check the validity of the you know, to make sure that it it is equitable, basically. Um, so it has to has to pass that test or be reconducted. <laughs> And there's some discussion of going to uh, more limited statistical appraisals. Um, there was a survey that they were asking for feedback about that as they're trying to figure out, you know, what we're going to do going forward. And uh, you know, my feedback to them was that I'm comfortable with statistics and it makes sense to me. I could never explain it. The townspeople, so right. it's. I don't think 
I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Keep us keep in touch. I won't do that. You know, they're telling me. Yeah. <laughs> Way. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't, I don't think they do, but Rudy's my chair of the sir. Yeah, you don't, you don't have like chair, vice chair, clerk, but. Like, or the listers? The line up here. Uh, yeah. I, I'm the, the chair. Are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know. You know? Now I know. <laughs> you picked the right one. The feeling well, that we're, we're supposed to schedule through. a new round of elections. Um, we were supposed to sign the new oaths and stuff, too. And <laughs> we we're, getting, we're getting we there. We we're getting there. <laughs> All right. We're almost perfectly on time, believe it or not. <laughs> Two Rivers Otakuchi Regional Commission, MTAP. What's that? What's that? Cindy's going to tell you. Oh. <laughs> I don't. Cindy over there? She's not. She said she was going to come in person. But oh. I don't see her. Where is she? I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's her over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, since she's not here, you, you know what MTAP is? Um, I don't. She had tried to send me an email about it and it was confusing. And then she said, but I can come and talk about it. So I think that sounds like an excellent idea. Okay. Um, but but also it, no, this is what we can do. So we got a letter from Two Rivers, the next agenda item here, yeah. about um, representative appointment. Our current representative is Michael Saka. If we want, we can leave him as the representative mm -hmm. or we can change it. So, so you want to do it again? If we appointed me, well, yeah. I make a motion to lead Michael Saka on the Two Rivers Advisory Committee representative as an advisory committee representative. All right. All in favor, favor of Michael Saka being the representative to Two Rivers. Say aye. Aye. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. You can inform that he is still a member. Uh, I don't know. Well, that ripped that off in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> Other business. Um, I mean, I have discussed with you stuff. So, does anyone else have any other business? I was actually waiting for Sydney. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wanted to hear what she had to say. Her just pulled in, so hoping okay. it might be her. I'll hold it open. Yeah. I'm happy to, to wait on Brenda. I um I wonder if I could speak briefly to trails. And the reason I'm here is because I know you talked about it at the last meeting. And I was looking forward to, to speaking with you at the meeting today about it. Then I understood that Mr. Bicknell is off in Italy. Yeah. And so we bounced the meeting mm -hmm. to next session. Right. Yeah. When I'm going to be in Italy. So as I don't know, we're not we weren't planning it, but so I'm not going to be at the next meeting. And I wondered if I could just take, if you have time, fit me in for five minutes. You can. You got five minutes. Want me to do it now? Yeah, sure. Unless you <laughs> wait and see who this is, I guess. If this is Sydney, then we ought to stay on track to her. Maybe it's the Yeah, it's Sydney. It is. here. Can you help with anything? You got it all. No, I just have my laptop. They're waiting. They're waiting. Come on in. Here, I'll put this chair over. Sit right in the middle. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You can talk right here. Okay. I wasn't sure where the camera is. That's okay. Thank you. Welcome to the meeting. I'm Gary, Mike, John, Hi. Brian, Baxter, Hi. Brenda, John, Rick, John. You know Brenda somehow? Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. She doesn't want to admit it. She doesn't like that I'm right behind her. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> I suspect it's. 
Um, so I'm Sydney from the Two Rivers Long Beach Regional Commission. Um, and I'm here to talk about the Municipal Technical Assistance Program. That's what that stands for. Yes. How do you say your last name? Steinley. Um, so MTAP started just about a year ago, uh, March 20th. And the point of the program was to try and provide some technical assistance. So grant writing, project development, looking for what grants might fit a project um, to communities that the agency of administration identified as having you know, a lack of capacity for various reasons. They made the Vermont Communities Index or VCI to try and quantify and rank towns. Um, <clears throat> like any ranking system. What's the Municipal Technical Assistance Program. Yeah. Um, so they made the Vermont Communities Index to try and score. And then the program initially opened up to the 20 top 25% of the towns that had the lowest capacity and then eventually opened up to the 50th percentile and then um, a couple others that had uh, huge flood impacts from the 2023 July floods. Um, questions so far? I'm just going to pull Does up the word. Does it make a difference that we have a grants manager? No, not really. Um, so technical assistance through MTAP, and I don't know how much you guys have read on the program, if anything. So if I'm repeating information, just let me know if you fast forward. Um, technical assistance available through the program starts with a needs assessment. So a discussion with you all and kind of as intensive as you want it to be um, about what the town's needs are. Uh, so MTAP has eligible project categories as well as you know, eligible activities. Those categories are housing, water, and wastewater, which can include septic and well, but there are kind of limited grants available for that. Um, so mainly uh, water and wastewater and municipal systems, um, business support and workforce development, climate change, mitigation and resilience, and then kind of a catch-all other category if the time has a really good solid idea that would be really beneficial for them. Um, we can see if it would fit in that kind of catch-all other category. So when we're talking about the town's need, in my head, I'm thinking about like, okay, general highway maintenance, not MTAP. Culvert that blows out every single time it floods, probably something that we can work with Rita, um, the transportation person at Two Rivers on. But if for some reason there's a transportation type project that's mainly climate change, mitigation, and resilience, we can use MTAP for that possibly. Um, yeah. And then if the needs assessment ident identifies things that aren't municipal technical assistance program assistance eligible, then, you know, I can try and connect to other great programs as well. Um, even though it's not MTAP, I can still think and have that in my mind that we never see information on grants throughout the year. Um, so that's kind of the... We needed a scoping study of, say, you know, a section of road that is going to fall into the river. Um, would, would you identify potentially with grant money for that study? Yeah, it's probably going to be more in Rita's wheelhouse, um, just because she already has funding to do, you know, to assess grants for that. Um, and she's going to know, I would assume, most of what's going to be out there for that type of work. But MTAP can cover. Um, in certain cases, scoping studies, design, and architecture. The program, so if it's, if it's revealed that you have a need that fits that category or any project idea during the needs assessment, we would then move on to the opportunity assessment. So say we had, uh, the town really wants to put solar on a building or really for some reason wants, um, you know, project idea A. We'd say that's eligible. We don't need to ask the agency of administration. So we move on to opportunity assessment and say, is there a funding program that can help with this? Or is it something where, you know, you need a capital budget and program, Two Rivers can provide that service. We would work with you on a capital budget and program. Um, so 
project funding source. At that point, we would develop a statement of work agreement, which is kind of a municipal technical assistance program internal document. It's an agreement between the town and Two Rivers for an amount of money that the state is reserving. So there's no obligation for the town to pay anything. Um, and then it lays out a scope of work. So it's like a contract, but it's only for MTAP purposes and it doesn't reserve any of your money. <laughs> it's only state money um, for this mm -hmm. assistance. And once we would have that statement of work agreement, uh, the state has to approve it. Um, your turnaround time is generally pretty quick, but we're entering a different phase. So MTAP has been kind of first come first serve free for all for most of its life. And we're kind of reaching the point where we can't do free for all in that. <laughs> Um, so projects are going to be weighed against each other and the deadline for a uh, statement of work agreements is April 30th. So, um, what the agency of administration is going to be looking for in those statements of work is town VCI, which I don't remember who it is off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Um, but like capacity. Um, project impact on the town if it's something that's really, really impactful, you know, it's going to move you up the ranking. And then um, if it leverages federal funding, because this program was originally identified to pull in money and to use up federal and state ARPA funding that was just kind of putting there. Um, <clears throat> was this set up with some state ARPA money? I don't know. It wasn't set up with state ARPA money. It was a budget adjustment. Yeah. Um, I don't think they've used any ARPA money on it. Uh, but as we know, the state continues to have ARPA money in its various departments. And this program would love to reach some of that and pull it to our towns, especially in the Troopers region. <laughs> um, so once we have a statement of work, once we've identified a project and everything, the other two tasks that MTAP can help with are um, project management and grant funding management. So if there's a C if you have a CDBG, like a massive grant that comes with a lot of um, admin, two rivers can take that on if it's in the scope of work. And then um, well, application management first. So applying to CDBG for you know whatever, or and or if you already have a grant. Uh, management. So that's kind of the gist of the program and as fast as I can do it. <laughs> um, any questions, any other questions, thoughts? Well, how much, doesn't Two Rivers have a lot of money set aside for this, this year? What's so the budget have, for this? Um, Two Rivers budget. For this, project for this program. Yeah, for task one and two, we had um, a good amount set aside and we've you know trying to think of what we had i think like five hundred thousand dollars or something oh no so the whole contract oh gosh <laughs> i wish um our whole contract is for all of the 11 rpcs in the state is 1.65 million some of which is admin time for program management uh, which two rivers is in charge of and then I'm trying to remember what the what the split is approximately between task one and two time and then what's actually going to statements of work. But there's um a good chunk of money, say like five hundred thousand dollars. Let's say five hundred thousand dollars that goes to task one and two time, split between all of the RPCs, and then the rest of that is being obligated through statements of work to particular projects in towns. Um well to to mm -hmm. assistance for projects in towns maybe. Um Sydney? Yeah. Uh, Rudy and I are both on the planning commission. Mm -hmm. So we've been, we keep getting the notices from emergency management on the ARPA pot of money. And mm -hmm. we're going through a brick, a brick grant right now to apply for a corridor that we're targeting for, for work done. And we decided as a planning commission that it's overwhelming mm -hmm. for us as volunteers to keep track of this and that we don't think we can take on much more projects like this, mm -hmm. you know, individually just, you know, the state says, oh, it's easy, it's easy, we'll help you, but mm -hmm. it's not that easy yeah. for people who have another job and they have to keep calling up and answering, there's a yeah. lot of work to it. Mm -hmm. Would MTAP 
Would you be uh, able in there to help with a project, say like a municipal building, like a town garage project? So town garages are tricky because generally there's not a whole lot of grant funding out there and this program's designed to access grant funding primarily. So that's the main issue we've been running into with town garages. If the town garage is in a flood area, you know, where we can put it under climate change mitigation and resilience of the like MTAP categories, we've seen, I've seen a couple statements of work from other RPCs come through that address that. I don't remember what grants they went after though, um, but that was specifically for flood mitigation basically, or, you know, trying to relocate the town garage. What's the specific project that you're thinking of? Well, um, we're identifying the corridor that includes a few things. One of them mm -hmm. is Stratford Road, mm -hmm. which I think is taken care of to an extent, uh, all the way down through to the village mm -hmm. and up Spring Road. There's another slide, potential expensive slide up there. Okay, uh, where was that again? So I can tell you. So we're still we're still trying to work on a brick grant for okay. that. They told us we had to do the brick grant first. It was real mm -hmm. easy, real quick. Yeah. So we're still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then once we did that, we're we've got an our um, our PO for an engineer to do it. We can't seem to find anybody yet. We keep hitting a dead end on that, and we've got a dead we get deadline. Yeah. Yep. And so so that kind of stuff is kind of hard on mm -hmm. the people here in town who are volunteers who are trying to yeah guide that through i don't think that's we right it right did we you know yeah. there's a lot of stuff we just don't know what we're doing wrong or they're just not engineers out there mm -hmm. i haven't seen it i haven't seen any other slide landslide or you know road where you would need to move a road or something come through MTAP so far. So I'm kind of the main administrator of the program. So I see all of the, besides the state, um, I see a lot of the statements of work that come through. Well, I have all of them, but I haven't seen any other landslide ones come through. Um, it hasn't slid yet. It's it's ready. That's so rough. That's the word. It's so, it's so ready. And if it went during a declared disaster, you could do FEMA for it. But well, that's obviously not what you want. <laughs> no, we're trying to we're trying to do this as uh, resilient. Yeah. See, we keep getting mm -hmm. the notices that this money is, you know, all this money is available yeah. to build for resiliency. Mm -hmm. And the road crew has identified certain areas. Mm -hmm. We've identified certain areas. We've identified for good or for bad, like say the old firehouse, the creamery, and What's sliding the... in the river. Oh, okay. So that could be like are those municipally owned? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. We're still looking at different things. Okay. We're just, like yeah. I said, we're going through the brick grant. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if the where the help could come for us as a planning commission or add-ons in town. If we, mm -hmm. I'm going to say for the brick grant, we'll see if Rita has any capacity. Have you been in touch with her? No, we okay. have. We've been working through emergency management. Okay. I'm curious. Tumbridge hired a uh, grant administrator. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious how the roles would be different or, or overlapping or mutually reinforcing. It's it's really just going to depend on that person's capacity um, and how much money, if we're able to get one of our um, municipal technical assistance program and how much. Um, it's It'll be tailored to the town. We would have a discussion with the grants administrator and the select board to see what, what would work best. So one of the things the grants administrator <laughs> does a lot of filling out of paperwork, mm -hmm. so it's kind of following these things through is a joint effort by any one of us that are working on it. Okay. So I didn't know if, if you were able to help on that, assist even with the grants administrator mm -hmm. on some of these projects. We're almost, yeah. we're at the point on the planning commission where we don't really want to they keep giving us notices of money mm -hmm. available. You're, we're you're at capacity. Yeah, we're, oh, we can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> we're done. Mm -hmm. no. um, the project that's, that's eligible for assistance through the program. So if you've already got a CDBG or something and you're having trouble managing it, 
then we could make a statement of work just for helping manage that specific grant. Or if you had two similar grants for the same project or something, we can kind of bundle those into one, one agreement and then put it to the state to approve it. Um, so possibly, I guess, is the answer. So if, if we get our crew, if the work grant mm -hmm. and engineering came through and identified everything and laid out what we had to do, this may help in the future organizing the actual work. I'm going to check with Rita first. Rita, if Rita can do it, that's going to be more of a yes, we can than MTAP because things have to be passed by the state and approved by the state. But Rita, you know, if she has the money to do it, she's yeah. definitely got the know how. So yeah, I'd like to connect you guys. And overlapping with emergency management and mm -hmm. that ARPA money is, I, I believe that all the notices I get are from the ARPA fund mm -hmm. that's sitting mm -hmm. there. You know, we keep telling you there's millions of dollars you need for yeah. this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely isn't. And what about existing projects like, you know, we're at the very beginning stage of municipal solar mm -hmm. mm -hmm. kind of fields. So is that something you, you potentially could identify, say like a federal grant that might help us there and then we could we could Detour the ARPA money we obligated. <clears throat> How much money of your ARPA were you going to use for it, or are you planning on using? Was it 10? Yeah. Um, 18, 8, <laughs> Perfect. It was like, you know, it or something like that. Mm -hmm. if, if there was leverage there, we'd be interested. Yeah, okay. Um, we haven't had anyone else in the region come up with solar projects, so I don't know off the top of my head what funding sources there might be, but I'll look into it. Um, so it's municipal solar on municipally owned town owned land already. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to listen, I ask a question. Sure. Um, you guys are thinking about putting solar on some of the town buildings? No? No, all of our town large. Oh, it's on the field. Oh, oh. Okay. field or yeah. whatever. The buildings have been determined not to be strong enough to hold them. Not yet. What engineer did you get that from? I can't remember. Uh, probably George White and a few other people. Not constructed enough to be able to hold the weight of it. So, how many? Um, what's the size of that potential installation? Oh gosh, Todd, so oh. Todd, are you there? He's going to do a hand up. No, that's my hand. It's your old one. I can ask him to unmute. Right. Todd, are you there? Can you speak? And try and look it up Sydney, do you have mm -hmm. even a, a partial list of, of some of the municipalities you helped with them that in the project? It'd be good mm -hmm. for us just to get our mm -hmm. juices flowing and be like, oh, that kind of would match up with the project of Tunbridge. Yeah. Because I, I don't know quite the scale or the scope of some of these projects. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we um, have. I, Todd is on his way home, so he'll be home in about five minutes and then he could. Um, have some input on that discussion. Okay, thank you, Betsy. Let me pull my document up real quick. Because we don't have much housing or municipal right. water or sewage. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. I mean, yeah. network geothermal, those kind of things. We could talk about those a lot of money. Mm -hmm. like that, and actually, George said that the town, the town hall or the old town building over there may be able to hold some solar. He went up in the attic and looked around. He said it's a yeah. different kind of building. Yeah. This building now. Mm -hmm. You don't go down the old town, right? No, it's going to go oh, out. Oh, going to be able to go where that V-plot is. Oh, that's right. Somewhere. Somewhere. It's good summer over there. Um, 
So we've had a lot of capital budgets and programs come through for our region, mainly maybe because I've been pushing them. <laughs> I really like capital budgets and programs to get your, you know, uh, if, if a town doesn't have one, it's good to see what expenses are coming up, you know, this year and plan how you're going to fund them. And then looking out, you know, five or 10 years to see like, oh, well, our fire truck's going to you know, reach the end of its useful life in 2027. We don't have a plan. Let's start putting the money sort of thing. Um, planning out those expenses can be great and can get you on a good path for figuring out what grants you might need to apply to in the future. Um, just because this is such a limited program in its scope and in its timeline. So it's set to end currently April 2025, I believe, um, with a potential expansion. I think a planned ex expansion, extension, sorry to December 2025, so end of that year. But that's not gonna come with additional money to my knowledge. Um, when, so is it, when is it transitioning from first come first serve to this sort of competitive? Basically right now, mm -hmm. this is a very- you need the better. Uh, yeah, a very recent change. Um, um, that solar is uh, 4.56 kilowatts. Okay. System. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That'll help me get an idea of the scale. I don't know if you are. Um, capital budgets. Todd's here now. Two rivers, probably it was Rita, right? Developed our like equipment schedule, right? Of replacement. Probably. Yeah. I'm sure. Oh, where did that you know where that came from? Because we have like a list of sort of when we bought things right. and when they should tie be There was something that I can't remember when, when Ingrid was on the board, maybe, or, or Aaron Gooch or something. Right. Yeah. I came up with that. Uh huh. Well, probably working with Rita yeah. or whoever was at the Yeah. Are you so, guys, so you don't have a full town capital budget program? You have like a maintenance schedule or equipment schedule of some sort? Yeah. Was, yeah. Okay. Are you interested in capital budget and program? Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, Gary, Todd here. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. If you, if you have any questions, I'm back from the blues train. I just I just uh, disembarked. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we got the answer we needed, Todd. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Gary. I think we have a fairly good handle on like like our unofficial capital budgeting. I mean, we, we have all these funds that we put with the equipment fund and stuff like that, and we put money forward, but maybe it wouldn't hurt to fine tune it and, and get a better handle on it. How's our size, too? Like what you were saying about the the, the slide even happening during, during a disaster, mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't have, you know, internally enough money to front that money. Right? Make an improvement before being a wooden pass back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's for something massive like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If something like that ever does happen, please reach out to Two Rivers. <laughs> we'll be in constant, like trying to reach you also, but you know. <laughs> but we, we sort of were in that boat. Mm -hmm. We listed the Stratford Road as being a potential problem yeah. after the planning commission started in on the brick. Mm -hmm. And then while we were going through the hoops of the brick, it slid. Mm -hmm. And then we had the flood and the disaster declared more slid. Yeah. But we haven't completed the brick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That flood in July really messed everybody up for sure. Put everybody back. Um, so we've got a, other towns have done flood resilience plan. This is the list of all of the RCPs, um, not just two rivers. Um, like feasibility studies for underutilized municipal buildings. If you've got a building that you want to make into a community space or that you want to have like indoor farmers markets in the winter or um, kind of a, a feasibility study, best use study of a building, uh, that's gone through before. So <clears throat> Vermont Outdoor Recreation, something grants, Vorek. Yeah. yeah. Those grants are municipal technical assistance eligible. So recreation plans, plans for signage for 
you know, if you have a town forest with unmarked ready, trails. Ready, ready grants? That, that's Vorek. Ready grants are MTAP eligible, but we have, the program is bringing in partners. Is it VHCB that's ready grants? I think it's VHCB. They're bringing, um, AOA is bringing them in. So if, if there was a ready grant in town, it would probably be passed to them rather than have um, two rivers do it. Just because partners have their own funding pools, so we wouldn't be drawing down the RPC pool to do that. Um, just look in housing market studies. Um, water system maintenance, not, not relevant. Energy resilience planning. Um, It's maybe relevant. So do we have to have um the like the deadline is April 30th for mm -hmm. this? So we would have to come up with what areas we would want you to help us work on this by April 30th. We would need a project and a funding source, or if it's not, if it's like a capital budget program, then we would just need to say to your response to the capital budget program. Mm -hmm. Um but it needs to be a fully developed and ready to sign statement of work agreement, which is again, basically a contract with the funding reserved from the program and then scope of work. So what's actually being done with that money. Okay. Um, so like some of our other part of money, historic structures, this one and the town hall, both lack of emergency preparedness, some mm -hmm. of it, some of it's energy efficiency, mm -hmm. some of it's, just making safe like electrical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you do any of those fit? Energy efficiency is MERP. And I don't know, I'm not the MERP person in the office. Um MTAP really hasn't touched anything that MERP might be able to address. Um and then there's a bit more so municipal buildings themselves aren't just eligible. So we can't do like renovations to this building just because it's a municipal building, even though it's essential to town operations. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's the emergency operation center or a an emergency shelter, there might be more we can do. But again, there just aren't many grants for just municipal buildings, especially if it's fairly small, you know, replacing windows or updating electrical. This isn't small for you, but it is small for a lot of screens. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so maybe the question to ask is what's already on your docket? What's already kind of in the works besides, you know, the brick grant? The trails. The trails, um, okay. the trails we, we've been, well, Rudy can explain it. Our RTP grant, you mentioned that Vorek won too. Mm -hmm. Are RTP grants eligible as well? Recreational trails program. I would need to know more about the project specifically. The current one was on the town forest, and there was another round that had come out. Um, that we found the last one quite uh, onerous to navigate. Mm -hmm. So I think we balked it. Um, embarking in a, another round of those, okay. but I'm wondering if this program was able to help with navigating something like that, we might consider it more. Yeah, it, it's possible, but I would need specifics about what the project is that, that needs done in the town forest. Um, and I don't remember specifically what the RTP grant covers, because I've only really done the VOREC. Um, but if it's similar stuff to that, then yeah it's going to be um, eligible for assistance. Well, and the other two municipal buildings would be, this is our emergency operating center, mm -hmm. this building here, the town hall as uh, our shelter, one of our shelters. So we've identified, you know, we put offer money aside to insulate it and improve it. We don't have a generator over there. 
Yeah, generators are. I know, I, I, but every, not everything that we need, it seems like we can't get. So. I know. Yeah, that was really frustrating because I was really hoping to get a bunch of generators in here through MTAP, but there's just not a grant that really is going to work very well for that. In case you guys don't know, the school the school generator that we put in years ago, now with all the improvements up there, it's, you know, it's outdated. It's old and they claim it needs should be updated, improved, increased. Mm -hmm. I guess they have to go out and stick a couple of things together to make it run. Yeah. It, sounded, it sounded like a haywire type of thing to keep the school running on a generator. Mm -hmm. Need a screwdriver. <laughs> um, so part of workforce development could also be daycares and elder care. So if there's a you daycare know, in town, some elder care meeting right here. <laughs> what should we try and say about it? No, no, you didn't do that one. <laughs> um, I have been able to identify a couple grants that might be useful to daycares if daycares need assistance and the town would like to use their MCAP assistance in whole or in part to um, work with a daycare and get them, get their feet under them better. Mm -hmm. um, same with an elder care situation. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if you have either of those in Tunbridge. Right now. Orange County. Yeah, Orange County Child Center. Is that actually in Tunbridge? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> yes, it is. We've been redoing the emergency plan for two schools. Wow. Because people forget we have two schools. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else is on your docket project wise? And there was a dental hub for the valley and South Wolfen Rescue is building a mm -hmm. new building. They've explored like earmarks, federal earmarks. And this and they, I heard through the grapevine that Bernie Sanders got some money for them. I don't know how, I and mean, they're celebrating. I hope it's true. Yeah. Well, Dave told me last week that, that, that they had the money to build the building now. Yeah, if it if it's true what Bernie got, they have the money. Right. Through congressionally designated space. Yes. Yes. Okay. If they need help, if you hear that they need help, we might need that with us. But CDS is not just here's your money. You actually have to apply to the program to get it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's good. I'll pass it on. But have them reach out if they need help. Okay, we'll do. Um, I have a question if there's a, a lull in the action. Okay, Todd, what's your question? Uh, question two, I, I have not been introduced to your guest there, but it seems like she's uh, mentioning things that could be funded. And there was a uh, talk about trails. Would Vorek uh, be an area that our legal trails, future maintenance could be addressed? I don't know if she's aware of the need for maintenance on our legal trails or not. She's pondering it right now. I am pondering it. Um, Vorek, attractive applications to Vorek are usually fairly showy. And um, I don't remember, they have five criteria and the goal is to meet as many of those criteria as you can. I don't think that maintenance is going to be um, very attractive to that program. Okay. Good answer. Thank you. <laughs> um, I mentioned this early, but if, if you need signage or want to make like a better trails plan, comprehensive town recreation plan or something like that, that could be attractive to the program. Mm -hmm. um, or a ADA accessible mm -hmm. trail system or something. 
Um, well, there goes my zip line. Yeah. <laughs> well, I need a, a accessible zip line then. First of the mission, probably. Yeah. I'll watch the solar eclipse from the zip line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I should get with Marianne and maybe Brenda and maybe Rudy and loop Sydney in and see what we could, what would fall under <clears throat> this MTAP that would be helpful and then sure. go from there to meet the April 30th deadline. Mm -hmm. And see if Amy, Amy Frost. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you do that? Well, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Set it up. Um, and even if we don't get anything in by the April 30th deadline, if, if we can keep talking about um, potential projects and because MTAP is bringing in some partners, we may be able to pass you off to a partner who still has funding. Mm -hmm. um, when the RPCs don't anymore. Okay. So we're trying to have plan B and C in place for all of our towns and nobody's just left um, without a without a statement of work and without further assistance. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so we're going to have a plan. Okay. All right, we'll be in touch. Yeah. I'm awesome. Uh, Luke Marianne, she's our grants manager, so I'll look her in and she's very much on the ball. Yes, be prepared. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Great. Just gonna save my documents and then I'll get out of your hair and you can go back okay. there. <laughs> You're exciting to this. Just so you know, Sydney, mm -hmm. Mariah and I are meeting on Thursday for the lab. Yeah, oh, I'll awesome. send it to you. Aren't we good? Thursday afternoon. You are. Very good. I don't think anything's changed about it, so it should be basically the same. Yeah, I've just here. got a few, yeah. Little minor stuff. Awesome. All right. That's it for me then. Thank you guys so Thank much you. for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come again. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. All right, John, you were you were wanting to say something. Good spot. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate it. As I mentioned, I listened to the last tech board meeting and your extensive trails, and I understood you were going to meet uh, this week to pursue that conversation. And then, um, but that's been bumped. And uh, and uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be with the next meeting in person. So I it's the most best in person. So I want to bring you up to date on my stance right now. And I'm not going to be. Um, first of all, my you know, my position is that. Um, um, while the litigation is going forward, I urge you to maintain the status quo. You're walking or or um, or close the trail as well to get that all resolved. Um, my understanding is that the Supreme Court has decided to uh, assign this case to a five judge panel. Uh, so it's on that it's on a full court docket. It's not on a so called rocket docket, which is reserved for quick and easy cases. This has apparently been identified as not a quick and easy case. Uh, I'm told by experts that this increases the likelihood the court is going to reverse because they don't look at it closely. They intend to look at it closely. Um, but we'll see what happens. The, um, uh, we, we, don't, we haven't gotten the schedule for May or June, and I'm, that's been predicted that uh, we'll be settled, and settled, and settled for arguments in, in May or June. Um, in, in the meantime, um, the trail, uh, you know, my, my, you know, of the entire orchard trail, which is one of the Focus here 
and particularly on our end, is full of a lot of low down, small snakes, medium sized limbs, and, and big trees. We have a we have another great big tree that's fallen down over the over the trail. Uh, and so it is not uh, ready for re public recreational use. You know, if and when you win the trip to suit, you have record, you have maintenance authority, you can go in with a chainsaw and you can cut it, <laughs> you're good to go. Um, but I encourage you to to to, uh, to, to not open it to, to public use while it's in its current condition. I think that'll lead to people figuring out how to bicycle through our fields in order to avoid the obstructions and it'll lead to people uh, taking it upon themselves to do maintenance by themselves, which would be an argue or an invasion of our property rights. So, you know, let's not let's let the court resolve this, and let's not enhance to expand the, the controversy. Yes, as far as I can tell, maybe not since when the trails were established, but at least for the last 15 years, either as a matter of plan policy or as a matter of select board order, the trails have been reserved for biking or they've been closed. You know, it's not as though there's an emergency to get the bikes on. They haven't been on for years and years. And years. The second thing I wanted to say is one of the ideas that uh, was discussed at the last select board meeting was um, um, inviting the stewards to come in and say, you know, you know, go at it. Um, and you have, you've been appointed, you know, you should determine um, what, what the appropriate uses of the trails are depending on the conditions. This conversation was held a year ago, uh, last summer, and whether or not the stewards were appointed, and the question was for the stewards just go ahead and start doing stuff. So. Uh, and my understanding is the Trails Committee discussed that and said, no, that, that's not exactly where we are, um, that we need to go through a process, a planning process, to figure out what the uses of the trails are going to be, how they're going to be maintained, so on and so forth. Um, and that's where it stands. I mean, there are a whole um, bunch of items that are included in the recommendations of the planning commission prepared for the select board a couple of a year ago, a long time ago, um, saying this has to be decided, this has to be decided, um, that hasn't been decided. Uh, on the Orchard Trail, there's the great big wetlands area, and the question of how it would all the effective bikes on that would be mitigated, um, that, that hasn't been resolved. So, um, you know, I think there's a, there's a process that has to be completed um, before we can think about going forward with bikes. And, you know, I think it would be a terrible mistake to say, you know, you know enough is enough. Let's just, you know, uh, push the, fire the starting gun and let the bikes go. It's got to be, uh, it's got to proceed in a more deliberate way. Than I do. And that's my understanding of where the, where the, the trails committee is. Um, um, Jonathan's not here, he'll be here um, next week or two weeks. Or two weeks or two. Um, and then the final thing I wanted to say is, is that there was a sort of a, I, 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 the, what I got from the conversation last uh, meeting was that you were targeting the Orchard Trail. You were thinking, well, the Orchard Trail would be a good trail to open up. Um, you know, I don't think any of these trails ought to be opened up. In their present condition, because the policy is still under development, because the, pale, the, the trails I know about are are not ready for public use. Um, but you know, I don't want to be singled out. I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think it's lawful um, for you to come after me. I know you're pissed off that the student town, and I know you're angry. I get that. It's cost the taxpayers a lot of money. If I'm angry. It's cost me. You kind of singled yourself out, didn't you? Um, well, I have a right as a citizen of the United States under the First Amendment to go into court to defend my legal rights. And and I, you cannot <laughs> retaliate against me as I'm exercising my First Amendment. You can be pissed about it, about it but you can't single me out for special treatment because I'm not doing that. Well, okay, that's, I, I just, if you were to, so let's again. Yeah. Well, let's not do that. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do is ask the trails committee about the trails, and if they say crossroad is ready to go, then we'll so we'll let we'll, we'll crossroad ready to go. And they doubt it will. Um, if they say orchard road is ready, then we'll open up orchard road and the same back yeah. there. But we're waiting for their recommendation. 
And just because they or the planning commission, in my opinion, recommend this, that, or something else, we still have the select board has the authority to do whatever we damn want to. I just there's well, I guess the only point on that is that there's been an, an elaborate process. The planning commission spent a lot of time worrying about this. They didn't solve the problem, but they moved, right. moved the ball. They 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 left a whole lot of things hanging. The trails committee has left a lot of those things hanging. Right. And you know, in the meantime, there's this very serious lawsuit going on, and there are a lot of things hanging. And this isn't the moment to say, you know. Let's say if we could, you know, bring bikes to a trend and it's not ready for public recreation. Well, it, it, here again, if the, if the um, trails steward says that we ought to open up Orchard Road to walk in only, that's probably what we'll do. And, it, and if they say it's okay for what's happened for the last hundred years, which is anything can go through there, then we could, we could consider that. But we probably wouldn't consider letting vehicles go through there. I mean, cars or trucks or whatever. <clears throat> but they might say bicycles are okay. So we just don't know yet. All right. You know what? Yep, we do. So, John, as you understand, that the, the Supreme Court say we're moving past the whole rightness issue and we're going to decide on the merits of this, or would that require further briefs from plaintiff and defendant? You know, I don't, I don't, what could they do? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 um, I, I think, uh, given the, I think they're going to be well versed in the underlying merits if they're spending this much time on the case. They might be tempted to do that. Uh, uh, whether it would, it would be, um, and they might recognize that they could send it back to the Superior Court, and then however the Superior Court decides the issue after struggling with this issue. They're going to have to get it back again, and why go through that trouble? Um, but whether or not, and I think they would have the power to do that. But whether or not they it would strike, I don't know enough about the customary practices of the Vermont Supreme Court. It would it would, be, it would strike me as a kind of an unusual way to proceed. As I as I suggested to you, I, you know, we have briefed this the merits to a fairly well, and and I would hope that if, that if we prevail, if we hope we prevail, and they say it's the right case, that we can ask the judge to read the papers again and render a decision and and we can get it done hopefully. Yeah. But, but the defendant the, the town of Tumbridge and, and our lawyers have also done extensive briefs on the merits. Oh no no when I say they're briefs they're they're four briefs filed in the spirit court on merits and two from each side. You know? Two, two filed by the town. Two but I thought merits was never even brought up. It was all about rightness. No, 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 the, no, no. In the the, the motion to no, the, the merits were fully briefed. This this rightness issue and the collateral estoppel issue were briefed in the trial court. And in addition, at, at, at much greater length, the merits were, were were briefed, but but the court didn't reach the merits. So it's just it's it's all it's all laid out. Uh, and and I, I don't think we have anything more to say. <laughs> uh, so I, I would hope that in the interest of judicial economy, the court would say, I, I, you know, I'll just decide this issue now. We can hope. Yeah. We can hope. You can zoom from Italy and what would happen. Yeah. I don't know why John would be now could do that, but. I... <laughs> Well, I might, but you know, it's uh, <laughs> but it's a little uh, underlying. I'm not going again. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be out in the not in the wilderness, but I won't be, I won't be in Rome. Where are you going? Going to Sicily, which is you know, sort of the, sort of the rural part. Of the, uh, where's John? Yeah. Florence and somewhere around there. Yeah, you see, no one has been doing it. I don't know, it's a choice. <laughs> Very kind of a map of each kind of a yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the island you were on? Uh, just letting you know, my hand is raised. Oh, it's not on the screen. Go ahead, Don. Uh, I don't need to be on the screen, and I do see the plaintiff there litigating his case in front of the select board. Um, Right now, obviously, the trails should not be open uh, until the snow melts, until the mud dries up a little bit. 
Um, as our attorney, Mr. Tarrant, has advised us, and Gary confirmed at the recent town meeting, that the select board can go ahead with their authority to designate the uses of the trails and also whether they want to do maintenance. Um, it's coming up on four years this August since this all started. There's a lot of obfuscation going on by the plaintiff here, and I respect the select board's position to move ahead. I know that uh, Dan Rudell was caught off a little bit uh, off guard that this was not on the agenda tonight. I'm assuming it's under other business, and I would hope that as things dry out, I am very familiar with all the trails, that they will be open to public usage. And it's clear, as John has mentioned every time during his testimony, that this is all about bikes. And that is very unfair to the town of Tunbridge as far as having a public right of way that is used by the public. All right. You can remember it now. All right. Have a good plan in Italy. Thank you, John. Good night. We'll be talking about in two weeks. All right. I hope to be with you. Okay. okay. You said you were just going to observe. Yeah, well, I wouldn't give though that have that be knowledge as part of this one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm right. You wouldn't be a lawyer talking to him. Right. Yeah. Right. You'd be playing English too. Yeah. I just want to know a lot of these out here. What the <laughs> hell does he really want? He wants control over the legal trail. He would have had it to not be a legal trail. And he sits right here and he's spending our money and he don't give a shit. That's, that's right. why I'm going to put it. He probably got more money than you, Baxter. I know that's half the police. I'm all right, but it's, it's, it's no. You put those two piles together, we could call it Baxter. Yeah. Do you want to have anything Rick, on the other than that? Uh, well, I did. I wanted. I just wanted to come down and say, I know it's late. But uh, I got a couple of things. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, like I did at town meeting, I didn't get up and say much, but what are we going to do about these roads? What are we going to do about the mud situation? I don't know. I, we've got to plan and, and come up with something because what you're doing is not working. Now, the, the, the other thing, you can't spread base material on top of the road and just leave it. I mean, yeah. I don't know if any of you agree with me, but that that's not even common sense. Because it's like on the spring road, I mean, they spread that two and a half, three inch stone up there. And when you get done grading, it takes forever for that to even pound down. So it's rough until they grade it. Yeah. And we got the roads now so wide and everything that everybody's doing 50 miles an hour. I got to pick up rocks off my lawn before I mow. I got to go, you can, the tires just kick them out. There. So, you know, and I told Rodney I didn't want any more of that up there. Yeah. Because that doesn't make sense. I've already cut a tire. Luckily, it was on the Honda, not the Corvette. Yeah. But I mean, that was. But I, I I don't know if you agree with me or not. But well, we got a quote here from Blake tonight for some stuff out of Lebanon, and we're thinking we're, we're getting close. Okay. Because you look at it. Uh, so all, anyway. all I'm saying is, you know, for years here we've done the same thing over and over, mm -hmm. and. We're not getting the same results. We're getting worse. And the, and the uh, definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and getting the same results. Right. You know, we, we've got to be smarter about it. This is, this is, to me, we're wasting a lot of money. And I, like I told you guys, the town right now has the best equipment that it's ever had. The guys, are good guys and, and do a good job. You know, they're doing what they're told. 
but uh, the roads are the worst that they've ever seen. We have mud season now four months out of the year. Anytime it rains in the summertime, it it doesn't just grease up, we get mud. So I'm just asking you to, if, you know, take a road and try something different. So we're going to do that. Well, not necessarily that stuff, but we have a beginning of the plan okay. to do that. We're going to try it. Well, and here we haven't said anything in concrete, but we're thinking about trying a section road just to see how it works. Okay. Because I, you know, like I told a couple of you, that road down along 89 in Hartford, mm -hmm. I've gone by that for 28 years going back and forth to what? 38 years. And there's hardly any mud ever on that during mud season. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be a difference. Yep. And, uh, so I, I appreciate you at least looking and, and, and thinking about those on that because I think we're just wasting our money digging the sand out of the bank and so on. I know we got to a position where there's nothing else you could do. Right. I mean, I understand that. <clears throat> but we got to do something different. For sure, I am. Okay. And then the other thing I ask you guys, uh, what is you what do you charge the town per hour for the vehicles for the equipment? And, and you don't know. What do you mean by what do we charge? How much do you charge for like the 10 wheeler per hour? Or how much do you charge for the greater per hour that is out? We don't do that anymore. You don't do that anymore? No. You have any we what do you want to if we were expensing for working for FEMA or with FEMA or something. Right. If we were like expensing for a grant. Yeah. We do have like a cost sheet of that. But on the so like, like, contract. Right. What were you keeping track of it on the time sheets right. and stuff years ago when we stopped? Did we do that back in the nineties ago? We stopped doing that? Or? Well, I don't remember if we stopped, but we, we used to do it. Yeah. Yeah. How how come you wouldn't want to you can't remember why we stopped doing it. We just yeah, we just stopped. So so what do you how do you do it now to get your equipment fund up? We just fund a hundred what well, was a hundred you just put up a X amount of dollars. Yeah, right. But oh. it was up to what a hundred hundred it was a hundred and six thousand a year and now it's a hundred and twenty six a year. That's and we did a schedule probably ten years ago. On when everything was going to be replaced, and that fit that. But now that everything costs so much, more, we've up the equipment account every yeah. year to 126. Yeah, I can. We always have money in it. I can. I can do that, but I just uh, same as Rick. I was wondering what if your equipment fund goes by the hours and the pay that they get an hour, but you don't. No, you yeah. just a lump sum. Yeah, and it's working. It has. For quite a while, but I think yeah. like, once we talk to the budget plan, we've got to put more in that every year because, yeah. because everything's going yeah, on. Yeah, right. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I can, no problem there. But then, yeah, yeah. But I don't know what we charge for what's the greater if we're dealing with fee. I, well, I don't have it, but I could get yeah. it. Well, what, what I'm saying is like in these projects here, if you knew how much it cost you a year to grade mm -hmm. and put down material and then uh, put it towards, you know, uh, compare it to possibly uh, paving some of these roads mm -hmm. and stuff like that. that. That's my idea because I know that the Stratford Road, you know, cost a lot to repave it and, and everything to fix it. But it's been that way for years and if you if you thought about how much material you would have to put on that road if it wasn't paid, right. how much time would be put into grading it and lugging the material just for that road mm -hmm. would be astronomical. Right. You know. So I was I, I was surprised. That's why I said if you know what you're getting an hour per equipment, and then you, you, you figure it out and see if it would be cheaper in the long run if you paid some of these roads, some of the better ones, and yeah. you can't do them all. But I know that we got the same amount of miles as we've had 
since the beginning of time. And right. it's, and it's constant as near. There's probably a pretty good sort of standard figure for that, I bet. You know, well, we, well, we, 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 we would have a figure if we we're doing FEMA stuff or right. something. I mean, they could easily, if, if Thomas kept track of how many hours he worked on Monarch, and then you go by the $180 an hour or whatever the greater is, plus the main. That's what, that's what I'm saying. That, that's how you can kind of weigh out the two different expenses, I suppose, or see how it would make out. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. Well, years ago, I think they told me when drivers are going to know it costs about the same to maintain a gravel road if you're going to pay So I'd, I'd much rather have this, the pay road, the, the dust in the, <laughs> the mud. You suppose cars go by at 15 and or 60? Well, <laughs> we, got, we, got a, we spent the money to put peace signs up there and nobody's been <laughs> off yet. We'll make Main Street I go by 25. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I mean, but you, you, ought, to sit, you ought to wait until after yeah. 7 o'clock. But you, you don't want to go to work. So you can have a bag in it. The problem with Hayden's program is getting base. Yeah. And that's yeah. 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 Right. Hayden. 50, 60 miles yeah. an hour. Yeah. Oh, 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 getting oh, base oh, can hold that base. All your culverts and your ditches. And then the other thing uh, I think that I mentioned that I would like to see is how much you're charged when you hire somebody in for hours. Um, no. I asked about that, and we paid your boy the same as we paid Matt Loftus. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not, that's not, that's not the point. That's not what I'm getting at. I think that the, the people in town should know what you're paying for somebody, whether it's my son or somebody else, what they're paying per hour, not the lump sum, because we have no idea. It's one twenty right now. Right. Do you want it in the town report? How much they get paid? Or? I think it should be listed. Yeah. Yes, I, I really do because you know uh, small town politics happens every day, and if we can't clean up our own backyard, we're not going to clean up Washington. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's all I'm saying. And that, you know, and I'm happy that you hired him. It's been a long time. And I hope you're happy with him or whatever, but it but that's beside the point. I'm just saying we should have it listed where anybody could see how much you're getting charged by anybody with any any equipment, not just <laughs> trucks. I'm talking tractors <laughs> or bulldozers yeah. or SUVs or whatever. In order to make it real so that you know that you're getting a, a reasonable price. And I don't know if you realize it or not, whether you've been told, but the twenty dollars an hour is is a high price to pay for even a like um, triac. I $120 an hour is a high price for a triac. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. Well, well that's why I say if you knew what you were charging for your own trucks, you, you'd have an idea. When somebody else is saying, well, I didn't charge this, so I'm going to charge this, yeah. but, you know, that's what I'm saying. It, it gives you a better idea as to what's yeah, out we'll into that. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, Ron, you I mean, I, like when we, we could send our own trucks to haul all day, or we sometimes contract uh, have to do it, yeah. and it seems, you know, about a wash. So it's much more, but Ronnie seems to, you know, have an idea of, yeah. Just the wear and tear in our trucks. Ultimately, right. it's right. it's about the same. Plus, we can use our guys in town. Right. Yeah. Plus, our guys are working on right something. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that that's just my feeling that you should at least let people know what what you're paying per hour, not the lump sum. 
the other this other thing that I wanted to bring up is is a grievance, I guess. And I hate to say it, but I talked to you last summer about the tractor or the brush cutter going up through there and clipping my mm -hmm. uh, fly wax and the, and the two maple trees. And I, I, I stood there and I mean, I looked at it, I had to go and clean it up. I had to pick up, you know, clean up the cuttings because it just shatters the branches. I was really disappointed. And when I looked at that, and I tried to think that it was done accidentally. But the distance that they did, they did everything in the off my topic. With it. And I don't understand something like that happening. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I don't know who, I, guess, I assume Jim did it. I don't know who he did. And, and I assume he did it on purpose, because like you said, it, but I also know that that fellow that bought Roger Welch's old place built that stone wall, and then the state made him put it back because right. it was right away there. Right. And as I drive up through there at 25 miles an hour, past your driveway, I think that lilac bush is too close to the road and the tree is too close to the road. You should have parked them back there another the time. Oh, well, the reason that they weren't was to keep the road where it should be. But you can't pass two cars there. Well, I, no. If I have to go into your driveway and I meet somebody, so the right. damn road's too narrow. Right. And so that's the that's why it happened. But when I put those lilacs down through there, and I know Baxter told me when he was you know, I shouldn't do that. But that I, I was that was within the, the rod and what is it, sixteen feet that you had to be from the center of the road. It's twenty-five. Wow. Center. From the center, it's 25 each way. Well, three you, rod. If you go up there, ways, if you go up there and you check out the culvert that's that's there on on Lake Side where we were. No, the one down by the Pingree place, that down below my place. Well, when I was a kid, the edge of the road was right on top of that culvert at that end. On your side? No. The other side. Yeah. There was four feet of culvert sticking out from the road. It was uncovered. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't take pictures, and I'm not lying to you. That I I lived there. I've lived there all my life so far. Right now, the you got three feet or four feet on the upper side that the road ain't touching, and the other side it's right on top of it. Mm -hmm. So it's moved that way three feet. And that's why you because I filled that bank in. I cut all the brush off that road, right. off that bank, and filled that out. So I had to and and kept it uh, the brush cut off and everything. So then I, you know, put the lilacs there. And you know, they've grown up. But the road has come over in. Now that being said, I know that uh, when we get this wet snow in the spring and everything, it's uh, easy to you know clip somebody's lawn with a plow mm -hmm. or whatever, and and they expect that. And when I come home from Florida, the lawn was probably as worse as it's ever been, and I cleaned it up. You know, took the talk, took three or four days, and I haven't even done it all of them. Raked up and cleaned up. And I knew when we were going to get this snow. And I knew that I probably would have a mess on the lawn. If it was by accident, I could understand that. <clears throat> but if you look at it, it's over a foot wide up through there, more than two and a half lengths of the greater itself. There's no way that can be an accident. And I like these guys. I think they do a good job. I clean out the culverts over there. I take them down donuts every now and then a couple times a year. But I can't believe that that was an accident. 
I saw that and I thought it probably was. Actually. Yeah, but when you're out here over a foot, you're you're he's watching the end of that blade, and the blade comes out after it goes by that maple tree where it's narrow, yeah. right out into the lawn. I, I can't speak to what Thomas did. I, you know, I'm just saying, I'm disappointed, that's all. I'm just, <coughs> I get up and went to work every day. Mm -hmm. I paid for that place mm -hmm. and I built it myself. And that was nothing but swamp. Right, I remember that. Nothing but cat tears. I didn't do it because I was rich. I didn't do it because I had a lot of money. And, it, you know, somebody paid for it. I paid for it. I worked for it. And I just, that, that's just a couple of incidences that I feel that it's not an accident when that, something like that happens. If you're, uh, what it be your uncle, Bob Mullen? He's my dad, and we know if you're going to talk about the same thing happened years ago. <laughs> yeah. So you should expect it, I guess. Well, <laughs> that, I don't think that's the right answer. Because Bob, you could see it even worse than it is now, yep. and great big turf rolled up. Yeah, I I confronted him at at the store down yep, here. I came along too, and uh, we we had words. Yep. And and, it, and mm -hmm. I he he said he could do it again, but he never did it again. But I I just find that unacceptable. Yeah. Um, well, the hazards ahead of the long coast of their own. Well, yeah, but you, you, you drive up by there, you see that, and you think, oh, that was just an accident. But on the other side of the road, where you say it's too narrow, they didn't touch any lawn. Right? I didn't see any, no. No. They didn't, didn't even get through the snow bank. He didn't get close to the bank or the, or, yeah. or the lawn there. And I don't think it was an accident. I don't think it did it on purpose. I think it's just how it happened. I mean, I've been, I've plowed snow before many times and I think, crap, oh, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. I know, <laughs> I've done the same thing. Yeah. I, I, you know, I wouldn't even let my father plow my yard because he was too, too rough. There's been some tough plowing situations. Yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm tired of that. Yeah. That's all. Oh, sorry it happened. But well, I, you know, I am, but I'm just saying, I just don't think that that name, you go down there, you know, um, uh, Randy Chapman, they don't ever get turf rolled up on his lawn, and I don't think you bought them. <laughs> you think, <laughs> if you think I'm, I'm complaining, yeah. you know, that type of thing. So, anyway, as far as that goes, give me that back. You know, uh, oh, I thought I could have it. Oh, no. no we, we didn't have a. <laughs> Half ass plan. Okay. We're going to try doing something on the roads. Well, but I, I will be with that. Yeah. So, may I put in two cents? If you've got it. <laughs> I'll, go. I'll give you a sack. I'll load it to you back. <laughs> go ahead. We've got some of you. Go back. Go back. Is your lawn higher than the road? Yes. That's the problem. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, but it, that you just problem. you just don't understand. It, it, no, no, I know I don't, but I'm just I'm just asking. I'm not trying to fight with anybody, but the state had the same problem right out here when you get down on the spring road. Yeah, that rolled up. Oh yeah, just about that high. Now I say, I say, <laughs> what they ought to do. Is on these lawns in the summertime, bring the grader up, peel that right off from there. Yeah. I don't care where it is, with my lawn, it needs peeling off. Right. Wow, so Maybe you should do that. Well, the thing is, you know, I, I didn't want to put it on your lawn. The reason <laughs> the, the berm was there, basically, the water is to keep the water <laughs> off. <laughs> what happens is I got the spring right here now on the 60s, but in the area where I keep the water, so that doesn't matter. My lawn still don't matter. matter. It's, it's, it's water. Water. It's it's water. Water. It runs yeah. down there, you get all this sand. The other thing is, if you peel that off, everybody would be driving over on the edge, and it would it just pounds up. The road goes down and pounds that up. That's why you get the berm. And it's, there's no foundation over there. Because that road was a lot narrower when I was a kid. It never was over there. Yeah. You could never get through there with two cars 
yeah. if people do try to get through with two tires now. Yeah. But I've, I've three times now in 50 years, I've had replaced the or put fill in along that stretch right here because the road gets pounded out and makes it steeper right mm -hmm. here at that edge and it's tired them off. Yeah. And then I fill it in to slope it so it can. Three times I've had it over the years, so yeah. they keep pounding out and the road gets wider. Well, we'll do that again. I know, but I'm just saying. Yeah. The Drew Road, that's the way they used to make them. That's nice and narrow up there. I'll tell you what you're doing to me is I feel like i got to go out and get my lawn mower ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can actually help you out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we talked about that. Rick was saying to me last week that that's the problem right there with the cemetery. Yeah. And yeah. They the public oh, yeah. 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 That should be peeled right off. It's cool. it's a lot of road. Yeah, but I'm just. Yeah. Uh, every road in town on have the edge peeled off so the water runs off. And right. That, then they would have to have snake cutouts. But you know, here I go again. Don't be mad at me. <laughs> you have the right to do that. We do. I know that. But I would vote for them. It would happen. <laughs> well, maybe it will be someday. I don't know. I'm here on the shop. I'm thinking about the window. <laughs> 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 That's a great. I might have some broken glass, but it's not going to go on by itself. Why the other side? Yeah. But I'm just, yeah. you know, I like things, but it's okay. I think they're doing the same thing. Yeah, very good. They got the right thing. Well, they did up there by my house on that corner you're talking about. They, 10 years oh. ago, that they peeled it off, and now it's right back again. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they cleaned it today. Yeah, you do an electric motor. Yeah, no, 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 no. Couldn't hear it at all. They say they've got a I don't know if it's here or not to the state grant. They get a big load of it right there. Oh, this one here was a small one here. Yeah, that was a, like a load of one. Yeah. 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 Well, something. Yeah. 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 The board kept getting hanging around. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't let them plug it into your house? We got in the corner, down here. They plug it in down there. Yeah. Well, no, no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh well guys, we gotta laugh once in a while. Yeah. All right, well thank you for coming in. Right. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So Goodbye. yeah, sometime if you guys want to look at that film, so yeah, look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll yeah. 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 okay. All right. I'll tell you what I'll hold, hold the one or two other pitch yeah. companies and okay. see what they got. That would be good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah, okay, I will. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. What do you have to say? Um, the shop the email. He had asked me for the couple of questions. Yeah, right. Wait, those are tricky. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> that didn't really help. Uh, yeah. Um, we had asked about constables. What other towns had eliminated the position? Um, let's see. This town, this town, Middlesex has gotten rid of it, and yeah, and Middlesex and Brandon have gotten away, gone away with it, but they uh, put it on their town meeting warning, so we can put it on next year. I'm making copies for you of all the Cal Hemingway attorney. Yeah. Get the, those four specific dates plus my response back to him that he had discussed. So you guys can read those at your homework. And um, then I have gotten back 12 pages, so I won't be here tonight, of risk management report from Passive about things that we should be fixing. Mm -hmm. So I think I will start at the back and have people get on the medium to high issues. There, there was one high issue, which was there's openings in the breakout panel over at the town hall that it needs to have, you know, this property closed. Um, 
there was, there probably isn't anymore, maybe there is, uh, refrigerator freezer at the transfer station. So the door should either be secured or closed. Yeah, that's what I thought. 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 Yeah, Oh, we actually don't even have a CDL drug and alcohol policy for the town crew. Right. So huh. we have a drug and alcohol policy, but not saying specific to CDL. You would think it's a good model. I thought, yeah. Um, it's issued by the state or, or not, or not or us. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, no hazard communication program in place for the town garage. So they said that we can get one that's up to VOSHA standards. Did the passive person just come through and yeah he came through because i had emailed him about the uh alcohol at the recreation field and he's like oh i have to come up anyways so he says that we should create a policy which does not allow the consumption of alcohol on town property <clears throat> these are just suggestions i don't think anything's going to happen if we don't do it but well, i think there's a timeline and we have to have it done by I mean, okay. well, I mean, yeah, these were all said that they were supposed to be corrected by March 18th, but I just barely got the email on March 18th. So, um, double them that day, and we're done. Exactly, they're they're over now. But so, anyways, yeah, I'll have I'll start from the back and work forward. Okay. I'll have you know Mike Howe go over and like you know look at some of the rail lines or put a mm -hmm. electrical outlet over. Yep. Whatever wire needs fixing. Still need to get. Electrician to just do an estimate. All of them. Electrician at town hall. Yeah. Just to get what quote or just even the ballpark of it. Yeah. yeah. Just to say, wow, that's a mess. Yeah. 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 Say it's not so bad off. Right. Yeah. yeah. The issue of the Gordy Bears and somebody. Else. Right. Um. Well, that's a thought. Then I. Think that's all I have. Got some stuff around me. There was a driveway for an access thing, but I'll just get it. We all would give up. Have Rodney get a pull from Haven well on the road, you know, they right. thought. That has to exist. Yeah. 